Hi, welcome back to Pinhole Quilting. I'm Liz Holpin and I'm filming this at our showroom, which is also where we do our training and demonstrations. If you're interested in any of the handy quilter systems, then just look at our website, pinholequilting.co.uk, or give us a call and our details are on our website. We look forward to hearing from you. For those of you who've got Pro Stitcher, either on Pro Stitcher Lite with one of our smaller machines, the Moxie or the Simply, or if you've got Pro Stitcher Premium, the same type of uh, <clears throat> same type of system is um, being used on the Pro Stitcher Lite as on the Pro Stitcher Premium. So the same sort of facilities that are available. Um, so you should be able to apply the same principles. This is. Um, a follow-on to setting up the quilts that I've got on the frame at the moment and I'm now doing the custom quilting having gone through the entire quilt and stabilized it. This will be about doing the custom blocks and I'll go through some of the thought process of how I'm going to do that. What I've done so far is I've done some stitching just beyond this uh, fly, the three flying geese here on the top and I've put some, um, a little border in, a little motif that's a square within a square. Um, so it's an on point square and then a square. I'll just show you that. So that is just here, which you should be able to see. And I've got my three flying geese, so I could do um, a triangle design in those. And I've got the corner here. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. So let's have a look at our pro stitch. I'll turn the light off so it doesn't just reflect back at you. And just looking at how I'm going to do this, um, on here I can load up my design. So let's just look at some triangle designs. So in File, Design, Open, I can then go into uh, Triangles within the Handy Quilter 1PS Designs. And I want something um, fairly straightforward, something like the chevron might be quite good. Um, or inside a triangle, that's quite nice. Uh, maybe, I mean, it's got stars. Is there anything there? I'm literally looking at this with you on here. Triangles in a triangle. That's quite nice. I could do something simple. I could do a sun fan, triangle maze, spiral triangle, continuous. So let's have a look at spiral triangle continuous and see how that will work. So I'm just going to load that up and I can see that it starts and ends here. If I put two together, repeat and go two, it goes across. That's not going to work because I want them to go in a line or either do them a separate triangle. So I'm going to go file, clear all. Let's go back and have a look. So you kind of need to know how it works. Continuous curved triangles, that's not going to work either. So maybe something like the chevron. Individual chevrons that I just place within here. I think that will look quite good. It sort of mirrors this idea of it pointing in the two different directions. So this will start here and it will finish on the other side of the triangle. So let's just have a look at that. Let's turn the light off. Here we go. So this is the triangle I'm going to use. First thing I need to do is rotate it. Let me just put you down there for a second so that you can see what I'm doing. Right. <clears throat> so I've got my, I need to define the area so I can do a three point area here. So I'm going to start it up here and I've moved my handlebars to the topmost bit of the triangle. So let's just define that area. So go to area, multipoint, one. We go to the other point, multipoint, two, multipoint, three. Okay, so there we go. That's my multi-point area and I need to skew that now to fit into there. Let's just try skew. So modify skew and put it in there and border skew. Doesn't work. So what I need to do is rotate it first. I'll do undo. Uh, undo, undo. And I will go to modify, rotate, and you can either put in the custom rotation in here, so 90, it's either 90 or 270, so it is 270, 
or you can use the 45 degrees. So it's pointing in the right direction. And now I'm going to baseline it prior to skewing it and putting it in as a skew there. And what I need to do is get it to fit a little bit more. So now when I get, so what I'm doing is I'm going to try and reposition it and align it and just nudge it so that it fits a little bit more in this direction. I think that will be pretty good. All right, so baseline that again, pro stitcher. I'm in quilt and I need to set up my frame area. So for frame area, we want to basically select the space that we can quilt, so we go into area, frame space, two corner, and then move it all the way over to the bottom right and hit frame space, two corner again. Press that button. So now we've got our frame space, we've got our triangle in it, and we know what we're stitching. So let's go to home and one to one. The other thing you can do is use these buttons to basically get it to the right size so that you can see where it's going to go. Now, if you're not sure if it's going to stitch where you want it to stitch, there is the option in Pro Stitcher of doing quilt without the stitching. So this will basically just run it and it'll do an air stitch. So it's going to the start You can see whether it's in alignment with where I'd expect. So what I can see is it's slightly beyond at the top and the bottom where I want it to go. So I'm going to zoom in and just reposition that so that the start is exactly where I'd expect it to be. It doesn't double line the stitching. That's also useful to know. It wasn't obvious. All right, so I'm going to zoom in to this point here. And I can see that I need that point there, the end point, to be on my quilt just there. So way of repositioning this, it's quite straightforward. You go to modify, reposition, endpoint, and it will just move it to wherever you've repositioned it. So if we now look at this, I'll just baseline that. And then I could zoom in to the start point, and make sure the start point is where I would expect. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Slightly over to the right. So I'm gonna nudge it slightly to the right. So this is the kind of thing that you can do. And then baseline again. Right, I'm happy with that now. So I'm gonna go pro stitcher quilt. This time I'm gonna tick that I want stitching the start and end and the pull up on. All right, so now I will press the run, check that my stitches are correct because I want 11 stitches per inch at a 50% speed and I just press proceed. Move it away, pull up the bobbin thread. Let's resume, it'll move itself back, do some tie off stitches.
Okay, so that's now done that. So I'll just pick up the final stitch, needle down, needle up. There we go. I've done my first chevron inside my triangles. Right, time to do the next one. So this one I can do using, I'll just pop this up a fraction. can reposition it, keep the same size as chevron and go to modify, reposition, find the right start point and press start point. And it literally moves it over to the next one. I just check by zooming in that it's going to stitch where I expect it to. And move that down. So just press pan so I can pull the whole thing down. Press zoom so I can zoom in. And it's going to finish just there. Yep, that looks really good. Okay, so baseline, happy with that. Pro stitcher, run, proceed. Pull up the bobbin thread, press resume. Just hold your bobbin thread and top thread ends as it's stitching. I've noticed one of the things it does on this design is it goes back over these first two lines of stitching. I'm going to be doing more of these and I'm just wondering if I could, in Pro Stitcher, New Start and End, I can actually get it to finish after it's done one, two, and goes back to three. Okay, let's just look at something regarding the chevron that I'm not um, so happy with on my stitch sample on my stitched thing here. I've got a single line of thread on the bottom one, but I've got two lines of thread on this one, which I'd rather just have a single line, particularly since I've done it in white. Um, I mean, it's okay for those two, I'm not gonna unpick them. Um, but if this were a quilt where you didn't wanna have something like this, where two of them out of three are double lines, then you'd unpick it and start again. But what I want to show you is how to do a crop to change a, a design that you've picked so that you get what you want, which is always good. So let's just move this slightly up so that you can see what I'm doing. So here's my chevron, all right? And I'm gonna be starting on the next triangle so I can sort of position it in the right place on my quilt. This chevron here, if we go into Pro Stitch and you start end, you can see it's 31.37, which basically means the number of stitches. On the left hand side is the start, and on the right hand side is the end. So that's the green start and the red end. What I can do is I can move using the jumps or the individual stitches. So individual stitches, jumps, and this one is 
literally from if you were using it for edge to edge it would be those intermediate steps so i don't have any of those so those bottom ones are the sort of jump stitches from line to line so you can either if you watch this i can either move this is moving up i can either move my green start or i can move my red end to i till i get to where i want to go using by stitch by stitch so that's at 0.54 and 30.82 now however what i actually want to do so if i go take that back um, to the beginning and this back to the end sorry that one that's now at the start and end that we started with i'm going to use these arrows here to move that end point so that i don't stitch those final two rows so i don't have a double stitch so watch what happens if i press this one it goes to the middle and then to the end if you go into on the Pro Stitcher Premium, you can actually look at your design points and you can see where these are going to go. Um, let me just take that up. So on here, I'm going to move it further. Now that means that basically it's gone back. It's at 18.66. It's gone back so that it'll only do one, two, yeah, one, two, and then back to three. Single line of stitching. So I've done it on new start and end, but I need to crop away those last two lines. So I go to modify, here's the crop function in the ribbon, and I'm gonna crop away start and end. Now, if we go back into the pro stitch at new start end, you can see that I can't move it any further than 18.65, 18.66. Okay, so that has now done the crop. Save that, save selected, Save it as chevron triangle, single Liz. And if you want to make sure, you can go pro stitcher, quilt, without anything selected, press run, it'll air stitch it, and you can make sure that it's correct. Because I haven't repositioned it, so I want to cancel that quite quickly before it starts stitching. Um, so let's reposition it first. Whoops, forgot that bit. I moved it, but I hadn't actually repositioned it. So I've moved my crosshairs now on the quilt to the start of where I want it to start, which is at the bottom of the third triangle. There we go. And I can now do modify, reposition, and then on the right-hand side, I've got my start point as an option. Okay, so that is now, if we just, to the frame space that now represents where my needle is. La -da. Double check that the end point is where you expect the end point to be. It's very small, so zoom in and just make sure that all looks hunky dory, which it does. So I can now start stitching. So you get a pro stitcher, but this time select stitch, start end, pull up on and I can make sure base, I've baselined it, run. Move it away, I'll just move you back so you can see everything. So it's now doing the tie off, so it's literally just done a single row of stitching and I'm happier with that look. If I'd done it in blue, it might not be such a problem, but I, I just feel that you know having two lines of white on two out of the three rows didn't, didn't work for me. But that's now shown you how you can crop away and amend a design.